We want to bring in Art Laffer right now. He served as an economic advisor under President Reagan. Art, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining good us. Good to see you, Maria. Thank you. Your thoughts on this, uh, Jeff Sessions being offered attorney general. I think Jeff Sessions is great. I think he'll make a great attorney general and uh, a very stable, solid guy, and I couldn't be happier. Um, he, he's got that team in place that stayed by him throughout the entire campaign. Uh, and we know that Jeff Sessions is one of those loyalists. But Jeff Sessions did so much work on immigration art. I mean, he really has been the architect of a lot of immigration plans for reform in the U.S., him and Stephen Miller. Will he not be able to use that strength in, in this different role? Well, I, I, I know Jeff Sessions fairly well, and uh, I think he's a very solid, well-grounded guy, and I am not worried about him in uh, immigration issues uh, at all, to be honest with you, Maria. No, I, think I mean, he's just good at super it. He, that's what I'm saying. He's good at well, it. Well, he, he knows a lot about immigration, and the attorney general has a lot to do with immigration as well, yeah. as you know, has been happening here. So I think it'll be a perfect match of his skills with this job. I, 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 he really is very knowledgeable all the way deep down into the issues. Yeah, you know, the Trump effect, tr President-elect Trump took to Twitter to talk about his role in Ford, keeping production of a Lincoln SUV plant in <laughs> Kentucky. I want to get your take on this. I mean, is corporate America all of a sudden getting in line with, with Trump economics? Just got a call I, I, from my friend Bill Ford, he writes, chairman of Ford, yeah. who advised me that he will be keeping the Lincoln plant in Kentucky no Mexico. I worked hard with Bill Ford, he writes, to keep the Lincoln plant in Kentucky. Uh, I owed it to the great state of Kentucky for their confidence in me. Now, Ford said the Kentucky plant was never scheduled to close, Art. I mean, this comes as a report says that Apple is also considering, uh, it may consider producing iPhones in the U.S. Wow. It yeah, it's just wonderful. I, but again, I don't think any of these decisions were made because of bullying or anything else. No. When Ford and when Apple look at the future and see a 15 percent corporate tax, when they see the prosperity coming through the U.S., when they look at Kentucky, which is a wonderful state that has been just destroyed by bad economic policies, uh, it's just, I mean, it's a tragedy in the making, Kentucky. And I, I just hope this will turn Kentucky around as well and bring it back into the family of states with prosperity and thank goodness for Ford and thank goodness for Apple. Uh, I think it's the low corporate tax that attracts those companies into doing this. I don't think it's any fear of having uh, tariffs put on their products. I think it's really a, a pro-growth positive response that I love. Art, uh, it's Mike Murphy. I couldn't agree more Hi, with Mike. your comments. We're, we're a week and a half into this new regime, and already we're seeing this. You know, so I believe that Isn't it, great? The, it's great. it, it it's is great. absolutely great. And I think symbolically, whether or not Apple does bring the iPhone manufacturing back to the U.S. or not is, isn't the real point here. I think just the right. symbolic nature of what's going on, that people want to come in and get in line behind President-elect Trump, is a huge positive for the economy. I agree with you totally, and I think these people also see the future fairly clearly, that with Trump coming in and with all of his appointments, these are very stable, solid, good people that he's appointing. And, you know, I'm getting all sorts of calls from Democrats and, and from other people who are of a liberal persuasion, and, and, you know, they have been all panicked and terrified. They are calming way, way down, and I think it's going to be even good when we start working with Democrats into the future to make all of this work. Oh, oh, uh, it's or, all of us together. Absolutely. All right, I don't want to be the Debbie Downey here today, but I do want to, <laughs> that's okay. I, but I do want to address one thing. Uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Maria, that's right. <laughs> but, but the, the fact that as the stock market has rallied, as the stock market has rallied, obviously uh, we've seen a major move up in, in the bond market in terms of uh, bond yields and prices down. Yes. At what point, given that you were one of the architects of the economic plan that is going to hopefully be uh, executed here, at what point do higher interest rates really start to impact the otherwise potential benefits of economic growth. Yeah, Mike, let me just answer, if I can, with taking a look at what an interest rate really is. An interest rate is the expected nominal return on that asset over the maturity of that instrument. For example, let me take a tip shield, a 10-year tip shield. The 10-year tip shield is the expected real return on a unit of capital over the next 10 years. You cannot have a boom in America without mm -hmm. the tip shield between being between two and a half and four and a half percent. So rates have to go up to maybe four and a half to six and a half percent, the 10 year bond yields, before you hit equilibrium with a real bull market growth economy. Look at the Clinton years, look at the Reagan years. So, so These interest rates, real interest rates were very high because of the prosperity. Okay. 
So, so, they didn't kill it. So, all right, it's Gary Kaminsky. So, yes. the fact that rates may go up and may have an impact in terms of, like, slowing down housing, as an example, you think that the rest of the economy will get a benefit from the other economic growth so that it'll, that's where you'll get that equilibrium? They won't slow down. They won't slow down the housing market. The housing market is slow because interest rates are low. Who wants to lend on a 30-year risky mortgage for for for, for 30 years mm. at three and a quarter percent? All the capitalists. Be, we have had the worst housing market for the last eight years because interest mm. rates were held artificially low, not in spite of it. Once those rates get up, you'll see the flow of capital into the mortgage market. You'll see the flow of capital coming into investments, and you'll see this. You know. Demand and supply are important. Low interest rates, everyone wants to borrow, but there's no money for them to borrow. Mm -hmm. So you want the interest rates just right, where they match supply and demand, and you'll get a boom in the housing market like you haven't seen yeah, in generations, way, believe way, me. When he starts rolling back regulations, that will certainly loosen up the Same mortgage market too. as well, yes. right? I mean, yes, he wants to roll this back regulations. Together. Here's Morgan Ortegas. Our one final thing. Uh, everyone's talking about the new Trump administration picks, but the one job that I think is going to be the trickiest to fill will be U.S. Trade Ambassador. Who do you think Mr. Trump may pick for that, and what do you think a new trade ambassador is going to have to do? I don't know who the new person he's going to pick is. What I'm really looking to is what's going to happen to my dear friends Larry Cudlow and Steve Moore. Yeah. If they get good jobs, we've got a great country going for centuries and centuries. I mean, I hope Larry Cudlow gets the NEC job. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. He's the most qualified person in the world. He's been loyal to Trump all the way. And Steve Moore is just a spectacular beyond spectacular. And I am just so happy sitting here as an old man watching Washington and seeing this future unfold. It's just, it's really it's really very exciting. It's really exciting because Steve yes, Moore, when he came on us uh, with us last week, said that he thinks growth could triple from where it is right now. We're talking oh, where we're are much we now? More One and a half, two percent? What? Yeah, he's been very modest on that. We had growth rates in 83 and 84, Maria, on a quarterly, on an annual basis for quarterlies at 6, 7, 8, 9 percent wow. Chinese growth rates. They had the same thing under Kennedy. Mm. You know, there is no limit to how, how well this really badly damaged economy can perform if the right policies okay. are put into place. How worried should we be that the deficit goes higher before it comes back down? Well, you know, you, there's no way it can't go higher before it starts coming down. You've got to refurbish the capital stock. You've got to cut tax rates to increase growth and output. You've got to repolish the imprimatur, Maria. Yeah. And all of that means that we have to run deficits for a while, just the way we did under Reagan. But once that happens, you cannot solve the debt problem in America without economic mm. growth. Right. You just plain can't. And so we need the growth, and this is what it takes to get it. And that's why Donald Trump was elected. His, his priority was economic growth from the get-go, let's face it. Yeah, he's a great business person That's, on that, and this is a business problem in America. Yeah. It's not a theoretical problem about how to invert a matrix over a Bonnock <laughs> space. This is a business problem of right. how do you turn around a company that's been run down for years and yeah. years and how years. How do you do it on a country level? Arca, to see you. That's Art right. Laffer, Thank us you, there. Maria. Gary. Thank you, everybody.